Hey y'all, welcome back to Endeavor. Uh, we're gonna take a look at head movement. A couple basics for head movement. Um, so, we're gonna look at slips and bob and weaves. It's standard, traditional type stuff that goes out of it. Um, we're gonna work off of Ashley's cross, that way that you can see. Now, when we go and we get into this, a couple of things I want about head movement. First and foremost, from a technical standpoint, if she throws a right, I wanna get outside of that punch. I wanna end up on the dead side of it. That's kind of the idea. Not kind of the idea, it is the idea. So I end up on this side of her, that makes it harder for her to utilize the other side. Not impossible, but harder. Harder for her to utilize the other side, also sets me up for better positions. Whereas if she throws that cross and I slip the opposite direction, I'm right in span for her to be able to use her left, right? So that's one mechanism you wanna look at is I'm moving to the outside of the punch whenever possible. Now, the next thing I wanna look at if I'm gonna do good efficient head movement is I want as little movement as possible to satisfy my need for not getting punched in the face, right? So if she throws that punch and I'm going way out here, this big movement, I'm gonna have to then counter and settle that movement and then come back in to do whatever it is that I wanna do. If she's throwing in combination, that's gonna make my life significantly harder. So I wanna make as little movement as possible. So what I like to think about doing is as that right comes, she throws across, I throw across. Except the difference is, I'm not actually throwing a punch, I'm simply rotating my shoulder the same way that she would. So I'm creating, if you're looking right down the pipe here, my head's on the center line, I'm getting my head off of the center line simply by making a nice shoulder rotation. Now, you should keep your hands up while you do this. I say should, most people don't. But when I get into it, she goes to do that, I should be keeping my hands up as I go to make that rotation, and then I can square myself right back up. So that's slipping the punches. If she were to throw a jab, I'd just be doing the opposite direction. Slip the punch. She goes cross, boom, jab, boom, cross, boom, jab, boom, right? When we go bob and weave, same idea, same mechanics. If she throws this big right hook, I want to get out and underneath the punch, and I want to end up on the outside of her arm. So if she's throwing a right hook, that means I'm moving towards the hook to get out of that position. If she's throwing a left hook, I'm moving towards the hook to get out of that position. Just like last time, I want as little movement as possible. So if she's punching at my head, it's completely unnecessary for me to duck that far. If she's gonna come and pause right in line with my jaw or my ear, I only need to duck low enough where her hand can skim off the top of my head, right? And the beautiful part is, whether she's taller than me, shorter than me, vice versa, they're always aiming for my head. So if she's throwing a hook to my head, this is where she's aiming which means height disparity doesn't really matter as much when it comes to bobbing and weaving underneath hooks. So when we go to do the mechanism of this, or the mechanics, I'm gonna bend down, right? Lead shoulder forward. I'm gonna rotate that shoulder to the opposite side as I stand up. That's also gonna open me and expose me for shots on the outside if I wanted to get into that. If she throws her left, same idea, turning in, turning out. And it's this nice, simple, easy shoulder rotation with a level change as I go to do it. So if I'm slipping left, right, it's the same mechanics with a level change. Left, right, right, left. Left, right, right, left. And that's where I'm gonna get into good movement, right? So we have our slip, she throws across, boom. We have our bob and reach, throws a right hook, boom. As subtle and as little motion as possible, getting outside of the arm. Those are your basic mechanics for that. Now, realistically, Ashley and I are fighting. If we're moving around, it is highly unlikely that my brain's gonna go right hook and I'm just gonna throw the perfect bob and weave. Uh, I'm gonna steal this term directly from Ryan Hoover, incidental defense, right? And that is, I move my head around so much all the time, it's significantly harder, right? It's in movement so much, which also makes it easier, right? Because an object in movement moves a lot significantly better, as opposed to if I'm rigid in the ground. But the other thing is, it's incidental defense because it's simply moving. So right where she thinks she's about to throw that punch, it ends up in a different spot. That's where a majority of your fighting mechanics are gonna be, especially right out of the gate, before you start figuring out body movement and the way her shoulders and hips orient and all that kind of fun stuff, right? So I, I want to drill. Nice, easy isolation drills, moving myself around. However, realistically, when we start moving and sparring, I wanna just be playing the game of good, solid head movement, always moving, right, and playing that game, okay? So one really good drill to add into this, once you've worked on the mechanics, is simply offense defense, right? What's gonna happen is I'm gonna throw punches nice and slow and easy, Ashley's gonna defend. I want her defending primarily with head movement. So I'm gonna move at a nice, slow, easy pace. I'm gonna try to punch her in the face, okay? And she's gonna try not to get punched in the face. That's the way this game's gonna work. So ding, 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 things go, and we're moving one strike at a time.
You get the idea, right? We like to do quick switches when we do this drill. So let's say that we have a three minute timer going. Every 30 seconds we switch. So it starts off, she's on defense. I'm throwing my strike, she's moving. All of a sudden the instructor says switch, we go right into it. Right, and moving through that stuff. So really fun, simple drill. Make sure you move at a nice training pace as you go to do it. And keep yourself in and force good head movement. Bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing around. Get your head bouncing. Things will be better for you. Good head movement's frustrating to deal with. We'll see you guys next time.